So in this video, we'll look at three different pH titration curves, and we'll discuss qualitatively the best acid-base indicator to use. So we're going to start with the easiest one, and that is one of a strong acid with a strong base. And if you've got a strong acid and a strong base, an example of this would be hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide. And when they react together, they form water and sodium chloride. And if you remember from the earlier lectures, right, whenever you've got an ion from a strong acid or a strong base, it's going to be neutral. So that allows us to say that the sodium chloride salt that we form is going to be perfectly neutral. And if we're at room temperature, that corresponds to a pH of about seven units. All right, so let's sketch the pH titration curve. So here's pH. Here's volume of my base, sodium hydroxide. I'm going to start with some acid okay, in a flask. So here's my hydrochloric acid. Okay, and I'm going to position my burette above it. And I'm going to fill it lovingly with sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to drip, drip, drip this in right and watch the pH change. And so the pH initially of the acid is pretty low. And as I add more and more base, right, it starts to neutralize. And when it's completely neutralized, the pH goes up to about 7. Okay, and then past that point, I'm really just dripping in excess sodium hydroxide. So the pH rapidly rises and looks like this. So in, in essentially in this region here, I've got excess NaOH. In this region here, essentially, I've got excess hydrochloric acid. And uh, in this region here, essentially, I've got sodium chloride. And we discussed it being a neutral salt, so it's going to have a pH of about 7. So we're not going to calculate the pH of the titration curve, which is too bad. It's kind of fun, actually. But we're just going to leave it like this qualitatively. All right, so in terms of an indicator, so how do you know when you've reached this pH? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull down the chart of indicators I saw last time. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, so I want something that's going to change color in this region here, We're about 6 to 8. So 6 to 8, right, so 7's a midpoint. So something like bromothymol blue might be pretty good. So when the pH is below 6, it's yellow. When it's above about 7.5, it's blue. So I'm going to see that sort of yellowy color down here. And I'm going to see a blue color above here. So if I'm looking in my solution, right, I'm looking for initially it's going to be all yellow. And then this very steep region, it would go transition from yellow to blue. But this curve dramatically rises in pH. So one drop would take us from probably pure yellow to pure blue. And as soon as I see that, I would call that the end point. So I'd probably overshoot slightly, right? So I would end up probably with a blue color, just a smidge past the equivalence point. But it's so steep here, the difference between the the neutralization point here and the end point here, right? So it's going to be tiny, tiny, tiny. Probably can't tell at all. So let's go ahead and look at what happens if you start with a weak acid and a strong base. And then we'll finish it off with a uh, weak base and a strong acid. So imagine we have a weak acid and a strong base. So something like hydrofluoric acid that's relatively weak and sodium hydroxide that is relatively strong. And so they would react and form sodium fluoride and water. Water, of course, is neutral. Now, the question is, what about sodium fluoride? Well, the sodium comes from a strong base, so it's neutral. The fluoride comes from a weak acid, so it's going to be basic. So what we should find is that this salt here that we form is going to be slightly basic. So the pH is going to be a little bit greater than 7 at room temperature. So when we reach the equivalence point, the point where we've added equal number of moles, our pH titration curve is going to be a little bit higher in pH than before. So this is the volume of my base, and this is the pH. I am starting with a weak acid, so the weak acid is actually going to start at a much higher pH. And uh, as I run in my titrant, as I run in my base, right, the pH increases. And when I neutralize it, right, I see that sharp increase, and followed by that plateau. So at this point here, I've got essentially excess sodium hydroxide, so the pH is really high. Here I've got essentially excess hydrofluoric acid. It's a weak acid, so the pH is quite high. And here's my equivalence point. And we've seen already that the equivalence point here is going to have a pH not of 7, because the salt that's formed when it's neutralized is basic. So the pH here is going to be, say, 8 or 9 or something like that. Let's say 9 just for fun. Okay, obviously I'd need to do a calculation, and I'd really need to know concentrations to calculate this, but we're just doing this qualitatively. All right, let's look at our pH titration curve and try and find an indicator that works. 
So here it is again, and we're looking at a pH of about 9. So if we go down here, we can see, oh, you know what? Phenolphthalein looks awesome, right? So phenolphthalein below about 9 will be colorless, and above about 9 or 10 will be pink or red. So that would be an excellent choice here. So below about this point here, right, it's going to be colorless. Right, so when we start to add the sodium hydroxide, the pH is going to remain in this colorless region. And then above about here, right, it's going to be pink. And so when we go past this region here, right, we're going to see pink colors. And the end point, right, is going to be this point where it changes color. And that's going to be right around the equivalence point, the point where we've added a stoichiometric equivalent. So that would be an excellent indicator. In fact, I think in the fall, that's what we did. We used a weak acid. We used potassium hydrogen phthalate, which was a weak acid, and our strong base was sodium hydroxide. And we used phenolphthalein because it's really easy to see no color and pink. So the last titration curve we'll look at is a strong acid and a weak base, so something like hydrochloric acid and perhaps ammonia. And when they react, they form ammonium chloride. So, okay. So just a proton transfer reaction here. Chloride comes from a strong acid, so it's going to be completely neutral. The ammonium part comes from a weak base, so it's going to be acidic. So this will be an acidic salt when we're done and neutralized at the end point. So let's draw the titration curve. So here's our pH here. And we are going to be adding base to our hydrochloric acid. So this will be the volume of our base. We start with a strong acid. So the pH is going to start pretty low here. So we're going to have essentially excess hydrochloric acid at the start. And as we gradually add more and more base in, we will neutralize when we've added an equivalent number of moles of HCl and NH3. We will have our end point, sorry, our equivalence point. And then because we are adding a weak base, the pH is not going to rise nearly as much. So ammonia is a weak base. So at this point here, we're going to have a much lower pH than we might expect before. All right, so because of this, we would expect our equivalence point to have a pH of lower than 7. So maybe we're going to pick a pH of about 5. And so the question is, what kind of indicator could we use for this one? So this is a chart from our book. So we're going to look at a pH of about 5. And oh, methyl red looks pretty good. So below about 5, it's pretty red. Above about 5, it's pretty yellow. So it kind of crisscrosses here from 4 to 6. So that would be a pretty perfect indicator. So below a pH of 4, it's definitely red. Um, above a pH of about 6, it's going to be pretty darn yellow. So as we do our titration, right, as we add our base, the pH rises and rises. It's still going to be red, okay? And it crosses this point here, and it goes ready, orangey, orangey, yellowy, and out the other side, it is completely yellow. But notice this curve here is so incredibly steep. One drop is going to basically take you maybe all the way up to here. So that red-yellow transition is going to be exceptionally fast. So methyl red is our indicator, and methyl red's a pretty good indicator, actually. Uh, unlike my choice of a color there, white did not work so well. So methyl red is a very good indicator to use for something like HCl and NH3.